Graphite is an allotrope of carbon, where each carbon atom forms very strong bonds with three other carbon atoms to form a hexagonal structure on a single plane, much like chicken wire. This leaves the carbon atoms needing to form one additional bond to be completely bonded, which means that in turn there's a free electron able to migrate within the graphite that only moves along the plane of the graphite. Graphite layers also form very weak attachments of the layers either side of it due to the van der Waals force. This means although the ultra thin layers of graphite are very strong, they slip past or over each other very easily. This process which is used in pencils where a layer of graphite is deposited on the paper as you write. Graphite itself is insoluble in water, has a very high melting point and is slippery. There's various practical applications outside of pencils from use as a lubricant, or as a conductor, or for use in brake linings. However, there is a specialist form of graphite which is currently one of the most interesting developments, with all sorts of possibilities, and this is graphene. Graphene is basically a single layer of graphite that's been separated from all the other layers. As such, it's some practical properties and potential applications that are really quite startling. Because graphene is still a relatively new, many of these are theoretical or under development. They tend to make use of the fact that graphene is very strong, lightweight, flexible, stable and conducts electricity. It can for instance be used as a vastly improved capacitor storing a great deal of electric charge very quickly. Possibly it might lead to replacing the need for traditional batteries. Due to its ability to form a thin barrier, it can be used in water treatment facilities and filtration and removal of contaminants. It also used to add an extra thin layer of protection to strengthen various items from monitor screens of mobile phones to the blades of wind turbines. Staying with energy generation it could also be used to make more efficient solar cells. In health it could be used to assist drug delivery and microdiagnostics and tissue engineering and all sorts of other possibilities. The sheer number of new patents issued for graphene is in thousands. This does possibly point the way to a potential new problem with graphene. Its widespread use of this material may be hampered by companies charging excessive amounts for the specific use of this material, slowing the rate of its general adoption. And with all these possibilities and positives, it does lead to the question, are there any downsides to its use? Well, in common with other lightweight, ultra-thin materials, if it were to become damaged, very easy for it to become airborne, and then in turn enter the lungs, where like asbestos, it may cause damage. Since the flakes would be, have sharp edges, these would certainly be capable of penetrating cell walls. However, how much of this risk it does actually pose, whether there are any other potential hazards out there, are unknown at this time. But, since graphene is so new, we have to look back at how graphite actually is acted, and it's been used for thousands of years and along lots of processes and there doesn't seem to be any dangers from graphite so it's possible that there won't be any from graphene but that remains to be seen.